Ai cool. 4500. Ja. Pizzo. Well, a very good morning and welcome back to Planitza in Slovenia. Day four of the races and today, this morning at least, it's the women's under 23, 20 kilometer mass start free lace. Slovenia hosting the Junior World Championships this year. Best of the best under 23 and under 21 athletes gathering here from all over the world in this famous and very beautiful venue, Northwest Slovenia. So six times around this reasonably challenging 3.3 kilometer course, fair to say that it's not quite as demanding as we might see on the World Cup circuit right now, but nevertheless, uh, when you're going at 100%, you're going at 100%. And uh, conditions today are good. Perhaps not quite as warm and sunny as it was yesterday and we can still hear a nice helpful crunch in the snow many of the athletes warming up this morning just in t-shirts and we are going to see a few of the competitors today sing today racing in um, short sleeve order I'm not a big fan of that myself I think uh, you spend so much of the year racing in a full ski suit but um, if it works for you then it works and uh, it's certainly warm enough to do that today so here's your start list obviously the uh, favorites and the highest ranked FIS athletes in the top 10 or 20 places number 14 there Maria Hart's Mellings of Norway bronze medal two days ago in the sprints number 29 Sonia Schmidt taking gold medal for Canada that day
50 competitors in all. Expect this race today to take around about 50 minutes. Oh, Margrethe Began of Norway, 12th in the World Cup in Goms just uh, 10 days ago in this event. Novin McCabe. Didn't race in Goms two weeks ago, but did do well in Davos in the 20 kilometer. That race, of course, a classic race. And Yaviva from Switzerland, part of the Swiss World Cup team. A little bit more of a sprinter, to be fair. Helen Hoffman, the highest ranked German racing today. A couple of wins in the Alca Alpine Cup races. But again, a regular on the World Cup circuit. And number five there, Nadia Kalin of Switzerland, fifth in January 15th last week in this event, 20 kilometers. So here we go. Less than a minute to start. So we're underway. All of these athletes will be pleased to have seen that the uh, the first tricky left hand bend, which we will avoid, just there, went down to the left in the sprints. Took a few athletes out. Quite a few of the women, actually. Some of the best sprinters not even making it through to the finals because of that tricky bend technically an easier start today everyone at this point just fighting for positions most important thing is to not lose any places at this stage but it's possibly not necessary early on to be trying to gain places but we'll see Anja Weber of Switzerland just making her way forward. Looks to me like everyone managed to get away cleanly. Must start races notorious for accidental for sure but nevertheless very very costly little mistakes where people can lose the ends of their ski poles the athlete next to them unintentionally just catching them or stepping on them well it's not a massively fast pace but it's certainly not slow either with Margrethe Began of Norway up the front wearing number one number two is Novin McCabe of the USA just 22 years old comes from Alaska has had three seasons at the highest level so far work uh, racing on the World Cup as I mentioned didn't race in gongs last week that fourth slot at the World Cup in this event being given to Sam Smith her teammate like the younger teammate who raced yesterday. So one or two athletes commenting on the uh, comments on the course yesterday that they found it quite tough. It's there's no real stopper hills as we would call them. The conditions yesterday were certainly considerably slower. It's been nice and cold overnight, so. That soft slushy snow has had a chance to harden up, freeze overnight. So we're coming through the 1.25 kilometer point. Began of Norway in first place. Novin McCabe in second. Anja Weber there wearing number four in third for Switzerland. Nadia Kalin of Switzerland, wearing number five in fourth place. And then Kaidi 
Kasiku of Estonia in six. Now, one or two names I may struggle to catch today, particularly the Kasiku sisters. They're identical twins. I think they're identical. They certainly look very similar when they're wearing a race suit. So they're twins. Number nine. Kidi Kasiku and number 13 actually I've already got it wrong no number nine is Kaidi Kasiku and number 13 is Kidi Kasiku so uh, forgive me the only way I'll be able to tell the difference is by uh, being able to see their bib number Kaidi there currently number nine just a few places back her sister Kidi wouldn't it be wonderful if they won today? I don't think we've ever had twins on the podium at a World Cup or international cross-country ski race in the past. We saw yesterday one or two of the corners. They haven't approached the most difficult ones so far, but one or two of the corners catching people off guard. It's not far away now. They'll build up a fair amount of speed coming down this next hill and then they have to be very careful to ensure they're under control for a really challenging right-hander that's uh, not far away now and in these slightly harder quicker icy conditions could prove to be a little bit of a problem, especially if you're in a tight pack. Anja Vieber starting to push the pace just a little, moves up to the front. Really not an awful lot of benefit from being at the front at this stage of the race, six times around this 3.3 kilometer loop. But it is definitely a good idea to have a little bit of room around you as we approach this next, here it is, this next right-hander. Everyone putting in a little snow plow on that first bend just to have the skis under control. The fact that everyone is doing it means there's no cost to your speed and certainly take that corner too quickly and you will end up in those fences. Now we get a chance to see whose uh, who's skis are running well. Doesn't seem to be any massive variations. So, Novi McCabe at the front, Bogan of Norway just behind her. They're approaching the stadium for the first time. At this point here, if we have a sprint towards the end of this race today, this little rise and these bends positioning will matter so much and the tactics where you go and when. Little rise, last little climb into the stadium here. Doesn't look much, but the sprinters will want to be positioning themselves well. You go up over this little rise, and then just before the flat 50 meter finish, there's a, a slight descent, which for us is uh, helpful because it gives these athletes a chance to accelerate that makes the sprint finish all the more exciting at least that's how i feel about it so fairly big pack most of these athletes that you see in this pack here been here for a week now no altitude to worry about at this venue we see the leaders coming through. One or two will stop 
the can and grab a drink. Not easy when it's such a large pack. Next time they come round, ah, oh, and we've just had a little fall there. What a disaster. That can happen. You're, you're trying to spot your colleague with a drink. You're trying to position yourself, get to the edge to be able to grab it. They are moving pretty quickly around about 20, 15, 20 miles an hour through the drink station area. It's not easy to grab a small bottle. You've got a ski pole attached to your arm. You don't detach it to take the drink. Everyone with their arms sticking out. I'm not sure who it was that went down. It's uh, sad to see that someone did, but their race has just got an awful lot harder. So coming through. The first time through the stadium, number 33, that's uh, Meleveira of France. She's moved up several places. Wants to be able to have a say today in the race as to uh, what pace the race goes here we'll see that fall again now there she goes what a disaster it looks to me like either one of the Finnish athletes or perhaps one of the Estonian athletes just as well it wasn't on a really fast corner because uh, the damage limitation is a factor on a fast quick downhill you lose so much speed, especially halfway down the hill. If you fall at the top, then you have the hill descent to build up the speed again, but fall near the bottom and the pack has left you standing. And it's a very, very tough job to get back up anywhere near the front. Marta Rosenberg wearing number 10 of Sweden. Easier to pick out the Swedes because they have those very distinctive white with little blue and yellow patches. Wearing number 10, Marta. She had a great start to the season. Uh, I think uh, winning one or two of the sprints early on in the year at FIS level. And second in both 10 kilometer races in uh, up in Idra in Sweden in January. The rest of the season hasn't gone so well for her so far. Racing at World Cup occasionally. Very few of the hills today, especially while it's still quick, it might slow down a little later on as the, as the snow gets uh, cut up with the, the racers traveling across them six times. But uh, you can see here, Norway's began using what we would call the skate one technique coming up this hill. Most of the other athletes staying in skate two, sort of second or third gear, you might think of this. These tracks 12 months ago, the venue for some of the most fabulous cross country races we've seen in some time. The big names of Kleibo and Simon Kruger and Paul Gulberg of Norway, and of course on the women's side, Eva Anderson, Emma Rebone of Sweden, Jess Diggins of the USA taking her first world championship win on this course just 12 months ago in the 10 kilometer freestyle event. What a fantastic day that was. And Novi McCabe in third place there currently will be looking to just uh, siphon off of some of that Slovenian historical glory for the USA. The potential win today. Conditions are good. That little bit of wind helping to keep the snow, the air temperature cool. By the time we get to the men's race early this afternoon, the tracks will have warmed up just a little.
So we're 13 minutes into the race. The pack is a little strung out, certainly a little more than we saw in the under 21s women's race yesterday. The pace, just that little bit quicker. Bogan of Norway. Choosing to make things harder for the rest of the field. Didn't race in the sprints earlier this week. Choosing to save herself for the distance races. Twenty two is Ellen Hendrickson of Sweden, another athlete who featured occasionally on the World Cup circuit for Sweden but the women's team in Sweden right now just so 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 strong especially the sprinters it is very difficult to make it into the team even if you can race at this level as a junior of course many of these athletes 22 years old already well-known names on the World Cup circuit already key parts of their national World Cup team. Again, being one of them. So here we come for the second time through the stadium. Little pack starting to develop near the front. It includes the French athlete just in second place currently. Melly Vera. 21 years old. I think she raced in the sprint qualification. Yes, she did. I'm just checking her results. Yeah, I'm wrong. Yes, had a good race. Came ninth overall, made the semi finals, didn't quite make it through to the finals on uh, two days ago. Ninth overall, so. What is her tactic going to be today? Grabs a drink, second time round. Obviously, now things have thinned out just a little bit. It's so much easier when there's only uh, eight, nine athletes close together. Easier to find your drink bottle that's uh, presented to you. We've got a, a mouthful or two of some electrolyte substance not necessarily really for um for energy this race not lasting so long that uh, an energy drink is going to be all that helpful can be actually helpful a little psychologically your body plays helpful tricks on you sometimes but it's mostly about uh, dehydration and uh, we'll see them take perhaps one or two more times on this race There's a lot to be said for feeling comfortable and if you have time and you're in a good position to take a drink then uh, it, it can help so, so far, so good. We've got about 16 athletes, all within around about 10 seconds of the leader. As always, Margrethe Bergan, pretty much controlling things up at the front. Novin McCabe, still in second place.
number 11, that red Swiss suit in fourth place. That's Marina Kalin of uh, Switzerland. Ended up fifth in the sprints on Tuesday. Comes from St. Moritz. Definitely helpful if you can grow up at uh, an altitude where the hypoxic effect of breathing slightly thinner air most of your childhood is going to help you. 25th in Goms in the World Cup. Relatively new member of the Swiss World Cup team, but quickly proving herself to be worthy of a place on that World Cup circuit. So we're down to around about 10 or so athletes as we uh, progress up this fairly long steady hill that'll get strung out a little more again looking very comfortable choosing to go into that skate one first gear technique as is Novi McCabe Vera France looking comfortable just sticking behind him in skate two Brewster of the USA also in that leading pack Haley Brewster fourth fastest to qualify in the sprints a few days ago Wearing number 30, look out for her. This is number, number six from uh, Finland, I think. Bill Mariti. Not sure why we. Uh, cameraman picked her out perhaps she was the one who struggled with that fall the first time through the stadium with that drink and uh, maybe just working really hard now to rejoin the leaders wearing bib number six suggests that uh, she's high enough up on the FIS rankings to justify being on the front page of the start list and thus one of the potential medalists today. Let's see if I can find out where she is. Currently, uh, number place, seventeenth place, coming through. Seven point eight five kilometer point. So as you can see, none of, I mean, if you've ever skied on a cross-country course like this, just going uphill, you're not um, a, uh, an elite cross-country ski. If you've ever tried to make your way around this kind of a course, of course, going uphill is tough, full stop. But we certainly see some much, much tougher, longer, steeper hills on the World Cup circuit. Those like Bagan, who've raced regularly now on the World Cup, will be finding this a relatively easy course. Number four there, Anja Weber of Switzerland, currently in ninth place. Five, six seconds back. Not crucial at this stage, but as we start to approach the halfway point, she will make life so much easier for herself if, uh, if she can just tag on to the rest of the athletes. Eber, not the best of the Swiss. Currently, her teammate Marina Kalin, wearing number four. No, wrong, wearing number 11. Yeah, she was as she came past the last split in position number four. So there she is, second place behind Navi McCabe. 
Good to see the finished fans have uh, made their way south to southern Europe, northern Slovenia. The crowd have been uh, tremendous. It's not a huge crowd. We wouldn't expect the kind of spectators we would see ordinarily at a World Cup event. Nevertheless, um, the crowd making a big enough noise to give this the, uh, the atmosphere that an international event, world championships at junior under 23 level. So, 10 athletes in this leading pack. If we include Anja Viva, who's just dropping off the back there. Now, just about everyone choosing to take a drink. Look at the speed. <laughs> I mean, it's quite a skill. You have to practice it, and they do. I think that was uh, Kali Bruheim breading on the far side wearing number seven. She kept hold of that bottle, made sure she got two or three really good drinks before she discarded it over onto the side of the ski track. Ritty of uh, Finland, we're in number six, she's made up another play since the last timing, currently now in 16, but 36 seconds behind, and that is a very big gap to close, especially now as we will see the pace start to increase, and I think Bergan of Norway Looked to me like she was just trying to move up Novi McCabe still holding on to the first place there number nine is Hidi Kasika I'm just trying to pick out is that her sister just behind her um, let me see well, it, it's either Hidi, the sister, or it's Siri Kijansinko of Finland, wearing number 27. I didn't spot the bib number, so well, let's hope it's the sisters working together. Yes, it is. So, Kidi and Kaidi currently in 14th and 15th place. 24 seconds behind clearly they know each other well so uh, i imagine they'll share the workload let's see if they can work together to close the gap a little bit Here they come, those distinctive, almost all blue suits. Twin sisters from Estonia. Just, uh, just off the pace, currently Sonia Schmidt of Canada, who, uh, as we will recall, two days ago won the sprint races. She's struggling to hold on to the lead pack. 23 seconds behind in 13th place, just ahead of the two Estonian sisters. So, chances are now we're starting to see a small group forming at the front, and uh, number seven, that is Tali Bruheim Breding of Norway. Ah, well, it's not, uh, not impossible for her to close that gap, but doesn't look all that comfortable to me. Compare her technique right now with Maria Kalin of Switzerland wearing number 11 who looks just so, so easy, so relaxed. The Gan of Norway, the red suit wearing number one. Seven second gap opening up to Breading of Norway. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight athletes. Now, heading way past the uh, halfway mark, approaching 13.2 kilometers. So we have Novin McCabe of the USA, Maria Kalin of Switzerland, Mali Vera of France, wearing number 33, she's doing well. Margrethe Bergan of Norway, probably the favorite for today. Lillian Gagnon of Canada, wearing bib number 16. Sarah Hutter, wearing number three, 23 of uh, Italy. Haley Brewster, another American in the top eight. And uh, Helen Hoffman of Germany, I haven't mentioned Helen so far this year. She's had a couple of World Cup, sorry, Alpen Cup wins this year so far. So we uh, pan back again to the Suku sisters, both of them stopping, slowing, I should say, pausing a little just to take a drink. Nice and cool out here, just uh, five or six degrees centigrade, but uh, every one of these athletes, 50 athletes in the race today, every one of them certainly anything but cool right now. So we're well over halfway, we have a little pack of about eight athletes forming the lead group. Number 33 from France, Meli Vera, looking very relaxed, looking technically strong, comfortable. Germany's Helen Hoffman at the back of that pack. Everyone just looking around, glancing. Important that they give each other enough room on some of these quick corners. And as they head down now towards the fastest corner of the course saw so yesterday a large bank of soft snow building up just on that left towards that yellow fence tricky conditions as your skis move out of the fast ice that has been cleared by all the athletes and then hit that softer pile of snow that gathers on the left hand side and have your body weight, your balance wrong as you enter that softer snow and you literally end up going, just moving. You, you propel towards the front of your skis and very difficult to maintain your balance. Today, the conditions I think a little easier, the whole of the track looking fairly quick, not breaking up. They will have put some salt down on this track overnight, which helps to harden things up. So we're approaching now 13.2 kilometers. We have a little pack of eight athletes. The medals will appear in about 20 minutes or less. From this group of athletes, the lowest rank athlete is currently the lead athlete from France. Behind her, Switzerland's Maria Kalin, wearing bib number 11. And the pace easing off. Just a little bit of unspoken communication there. French athlete not willing to do all of the work. Certainly tougher at this level if you have to leave. So there's your lead pack. One German. One Norwegian, one Italian, two Americans, a Swiss athlete, and one French athlete who, to me, is looking very good, looking comfortable.
Two more laps to go. We start fifth time up this long, gradual hill. Now the tactics start to be considered. We saw yesterday in the men's race, junior race, the winner choosing to not just make a break reasonably early on but in the second second loop getting away Jürgen Nordhagen of Norway ended up well 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 over two minutes ahead of second place so that was Italian's Axel Artusi two minutes difference between the winner and silver medal and that two minute gap was created well well ahead of the halfway point Jürgen Norhagen not just choosing a tactic that would win him gold as my colleague Patrick said yesterday you win by two minutes you don't get any more gold it's still the gold medal but um, what you do manage to achieve is you send a very very strong message back up to the senior World Cup team in Norway very hard for them to rule Nordhaugen out of the remainder of the World Cup season altogether with that kind of quality of performance so much more dominant than any other racer in the field yesterday had the race to himself so many tail enders. Oh, and the French athlete has gone down and she's got a broken ski pole. In fact, looks to, yeah, certainly one broken ski pole and this is just about the worst place. A long, slow drag up this hill. There will be someone to the right of this crowd who will offer her a ski pole. A German coach, very commendable. One of the German coaches providing a ski pole for well well so very there getting lots of support that is so difficult to ski you end up with the wrong size pole it doesn't look like it's much different but just one or two inches difference on these ski poles and it just affects your technique and your balance she'll be looking there will be a, a message sent out to one of the French supporters further around the course. I think she uh, hasn't got anyone else to blame, unfortunately, for herself there than herself. I think uh, the fault came from herself, but uh, it certainly looks at this stage as though there's no serious damage done. Obviously, she's dropped down into well, seventh or eighth place and slowly working our way back up. You get a little bit of an adrenaline kick and other chemicals in your body are released when uh, the panic kicks in. You have a slightly exhausting effect. Uh, but uh, and, and the smart thing to do now will be to just tuck in, regroup, relax a little bit, just talk to yourself, tell yourself that... Uh, no major harm done and wouldn't today be a good day to win having had a little fall and uh, had a technical kit issue certainly looks to me as though she's got some good skis there I think she's moved up into fifth place and uh, still accelerating into fourth as she comes around that corner a little bit of concertina effect helping her and uh, everyone gets to relax a little bit well look at that didn't take long didn't take long for Vera to get herself back up near the front 
She may well be looking now for one of her colleagues out on the course to provide her with an identical ski pole to the one that she broke. Again, with Norway still looking strong. The head is starting to nod. That's often a sign of fatigue. Looks around, happy to let someone else go ahead, despite the fact that we are approaching a fairly fast corner. Nothing the cave. USA wearing bib number two, still in a good position there. Everyone here. With uh, every chance of being in this pack as we start the final two or three hills once we've gone through the stadium. So hats off to the French athlete forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong Vera, I have it, Mele Vera light, slim, build when the conditions get soft and slushy that's often the size and shape, physique of athlete that seems to be able to cope well in the slower, slushier conditions and these tracks will be starting to slow down a little now. The bigger athletes and the heavier athletes, the skis inevitably therefore pressing deeper into the snow and, and uh, as the tracks get cut up it becomes harder. Your light and nimble you glide across the top of the snow just a little easier. So, last time through the stadium, one more 3.3 kilometer loop to go. Little pack of eight. The nearest competitors behind them are well over 30 seconds back. Will have virtually lost sight of this lead group. So there's certainly an opportunity now for Vera to change her ski pole in the stadium. There will be spare ski poles. I'm surprised she hasn't managed to do that yet, unless I've somehow missed it, as we've, uh, we've lost sight of her. Will they take a drink? Will she take a ski pole? Let's see what she chooses to do, if we can catch it. Most athletes deciding another drink is worth having. Nobody wanting to be left behind. <laughs> I think uh, one of the Norwegian coaches there suffering a little from a, a finger that was caught. So the Kasiko sisters leading the chasing group. Number nine is Kaidi Kasiko. Number 13 is Kidi Kasiko. We've got uh, two Norwegians just behind them. Let's try and get you their names in a second. Tali Bruheim Breding is one of them, and uh, Tuva Brusvin Jensen, wearing bib number eight, in that little pack as well. So we're on the final loop, at least. The leaders are everyone else approaching the stadium for the last time through the stadium past the drink stop the field well well strung out now Marta Rosenberg currently 17th place we're in bib number 10 partner of Oscar Svensson I understand and today is uh, her one year anniversary of her first ever World Cup race and uh, what a baptism of fire that was. This was the 50 kilometer freestyle race that uh, she entered exactly one year ago. That is a tough, tough race to do as your first ever race. I wonder if she's logged that it is her World Cup anniversary date. 
Probably has better things to think about today than that. Good to hear some uh, British voices out there supporting. Tabitha Williams yesterday, brilliant 21st place in the junior class under 21s, 21st place at a world class world championships event for a British athlete. I believe she's had that position once before at this level, but that really is a fantastic result and many, many well-known international World Cup athletes further down the results than Tabitha. So uh, well done, the British team really developing some strong, strong young athletes. So the pace now has really picked up Novi McCabe of the USA looking to push the pace and stretch the field out. Brewster of the USA in second place and the French athlete who has recovered well from her fall earlier in third. Kaylin of Switzerland in fourth. Gagnon of Canada in fifth. And uh, just trying to work out where, where was began. Well, seven seconds down at this stage. That's not a major crisis. It's not a huge, huge deficit. But once the gap opens up and Ah, oh, began to me. The head is nodding. We spotted it earlier on about 10 minutes ago, and it was not a good sign. Looked like she, well, she did do a lot of the work early on. She was often up by the front, and I think she's paying for that extra effort. Helen Hoffman also struggling with Bergan in this second pack. We have four athletes, two from the USA, one Swiss athlete and one French athlete forming this leading pack. Began looks to me like she's really, really struggling now. Arms, legs, core, muscles full, full of lactic. You feel it in the thighs. You feel it in the shoulders and the triceps. Burning pain at this stage, so far into a 20 kilometer freestyle mass start race. So four athletes. Up at the front, Maria Kalin of Switzerland, wearing bib number 11. Ended the sprints two days ago in fifth place. So she has a good chance of taking the lead. The race has gone perfectly to plan for her. Novin McCabe didn't race in Goms last week. Has that helped ensure she's got plenty of, plenty of energy, plenty of fuel in the tank for today? Struggling a little at the back of this pack. Looks to me to be the weaker of the four at this stage. Slightly more ragged look to her technique. Looks like she's reaching and struggling just to hang on. Is this going to reduce down now to three athletes as we approach the stadium? Two of these athletes we know are good sprinters, at least two of them. The French girl in the lead. Eighth or ninth, I can't remember, two days ago in the sprint. So she knows how to finish this kind of a race. The Swiss athlete, Kaylin, Maria Kaylin. Fifth overall, made the final, failed to make the podium. Is it going to be a different story today for Kaylin? Brewster of the USA. We haven't spoken about Brewster much today, but everyone is talking about her right now. Currently in the lead as she comes up over this little rise. Oh no, look at that. Novi McCabe was taken out. So that almost guarantees it is way too short a race now. The finish line is too close. 
Let's see what happened. What happened? Ah, oh, it's again difficult to to tell. The French athlete and McCabe just collided slightly. They did connect somehow, but uh, I couldn't tell who was at fault. Certainly right now, though. Maria Kalian of Switzerland moving ahead. She's in front of Brewster from the USA and. Tuesday, Wednesday's sprint training and racing paying off now. She's got all the speed she needs to finish this race. No one is going to get close to her. She can ease off. Switzerland have a gold medal. The USA come in in second place. Brewster just 1.3 seconds behind. McKay very nearly made it back there, but Francis Vera securing that bronze medal what a disappointment what a disappointment for Novi McCabe she will be gutted a technical flaw one or two hundred meters from the finish Hoffman coming in sixth Brigand in seventh Gagnon of Canada in fifth and back in eighth place first of the Italian athletes Sarah Hutter wearing number 23, one of the one of three athletes racing today, probably not the one who expected to finish first, that position probably would have gone to Veronica Silvestri, at least in the uh, in the eyes of the bookies, because she's had a couple of wins recently, certainly looked like she was on good form, and look at this, ninth and 10th place, the Casico sisters, that's brilliant news, they will be delighted, so, Kaidi comes in first, bib number nine, and Kidi, her sister, well, they crossed the line virtually together, didn't actually see whether they uh, challenged one another for those final two slots, but quite a quite a, th a, a good result for Estonia there. The last two places in the top ten of this Junior World Championships under 23 category. Salabruheim Breding of Norway coming in in 11th. Francis Chloe Pagnier in 12th. Another of the Americans in the top 20. It's Kendall Kramer. And Yaviba, we're in number six. For 16th place, bit of a disappointment for her. Ritty of Finland had that fall earlier on going through the stadium. Pretty sure it was her. Ends up down in 20th place, 228 behind. That'll be a bitter disappointment for her, if only. Jasmine Drolle of uh, Canada in 18th and Rosie Fordham of Australia. Good result. Top 20 position for Rosie. Wearing bib number 36, which gives you an idea, a rough idea, because there's so many complicated uh, points to consider. FIS points raised in different continents at different times. Also uh, taking into account the uh, positions and successes at World Cup with a handful of these athletes. Notably, uh, Marta Bergan, who didn't, uh, didn't manage to get the position, the, the result that she would have expected today, seemed to have done too much, I think, of the work early on today. And... Uh, that can often cost you as you progress to the latter third of this race. One of the fans being greeted by the cameraman. Hope his family are watching. Always good to get on telly. Melling. Uh, number 14 is was Maria Hartz Melling. She got a bronze medal two days ago. Fastest qualifier in the sprints. The distant race just proving to be a little too long for her today. 
Ingerson of Sweden comes over the line, 420 behind. Another Swedish athlete just behind her. Lundgren Bigstrom. Well, well, it's uh, always good when it's a beautiful day to start a race and uh, nice to finish in the sunshine too. So no, I don't think any major surprises today. Hayley Brewster perhaps, wearing bib number 30, getting on the podium. Mele Vera of France, wearing bib 33. But Marina Kalin, the sprinter, two days ago, uh, one of the sprinters who proved that if she was going to be in the pack towards the end of this race today, then um, she had the confidence and clearly the capability to pull away and secure the gold medal for Switzerland. A little bit of drama in the race. Hard to say whether the fall ultimately affected the French athlete's final position. Two Estonian girls getting to race and work together. Both securing, there's this fall from the French athlete. Well, a good lesson, I think, to have gone through that kind of experience at this stage and yet to work your way back up through the rankings and to be involved oh my word to be involved again in another collision later on Novia McKay bitterly bitterly upset by that she will rue the day that she just got a little too, too close to the uh, the French athlete McKay there showing all of the signs the body language of bitter bitter disappointment So here's your results, just to confirm, a win for Switzerland, Kaylee. Brewster takes the silver for the USA and Vera France, the bronze medal. Novia McCabe having to Approach settle for a fourth place, just, just three tenths of a second behind the French athlete. Gagnon of uh, Canada taking fourth position. Ritty of Finland struggling after that fall early on in the stadium managed to pull some of those positions back but ending up back right down there in 20th position Maria Hartz Melling of Norway has one medal from these championships in the sprint two days ago no joy today. Petra Viktakova of the Czech Republic. 6.41 behind. Didn't get lapped. Pulled out at this level of competition if you are lapped by the leaders. The Swiss flag. You will almost certainly know that the athlete he came here to shout and cheer for all of that cheering paid off for Switzerland today here he is I know who he's looking for you can't get into that enclosure at the finish start finish area unless he's got the appropriate accreditation that suggests he's also probably got a radio somewhere in his pocket part of the support team what a beautiful venue this is wonderful place to compete beautiful place to visit northern slovenia had its troubles go back 30 years and uh, of course there was a lot of tension in this part of the world but uh, a successful alpine district now 
And great that it's able to host events where the likes of Marina Kalin can come and perform and go home with a gold, at least one gold medal around her neck. We'll expect to see Kalin on the World Cup as we progress through the rest of this season, but not before she competes a couple of days from now in the uh, interval 10 kilometer classic race. So, thank you for joining us this morning. Look forward to the uh, the men's race this afternoon. The men's twenty kilometer. Last start, three race to start at, uh, at one o'clock UK time. Joe Davies of the USA starting today. In that race goes off bib number 10 out for him I'm not sure if we're gonna stay for the flower ceremony but at least we uh, we have the obligatory uh, <laughs> the obligatory unpracticed Photo jump. There we go. That one will do. I'm sure the uh, the cameraman will be pleased with that. The uh, officials are gathering, ready for the flower ceremony and the awarding of the medals. Let's hear from Marina Kalin. It just feels great. It's so incredible and I'm just so happy now. <laughs> How did you feel during the race? I felt really good. So the first couple laps were, well, not easy, but it felt like, yeah, it's going to be okay today. And then, yeah, I just tried to stay with the group and yeah, in the end, it, it's cool. So <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy. Can you repeat in Switzerland? Um, ja, es ist einfach mega cool, weil ich habe mich auch gut gefühlt, die ersten paar Runden. Und nachher, ja, auf der letzten habe ich einfach probiert, zum dran zu bleiben. Und dann, ja, hat es gelangt am Schluss. Das ist mega cool. Super! <lacht> Thanks. See you in 10 minutes. Well, that was good to hear, wasn't it? Uh, her tactics. Of course, the race, any race is never easy at any point in the race, really. But uh, clearly not so difficult that she couldn't. Just hang on there, and uh, given that she is a, a renowned sprinter, someone who can can uh, kick up one or two gears at the end of a race in the last few hundred meters, all she really needed to do was to just hang in there. And we didn't see her go to the front very often. If uh, if the the terrain uh, meant that her skis just travelled a little quicker than the others, then she would naturally move up into that first one or two slots but rarely did we see her right up at the front and I think that was a good tactic for Marina ensuring that she was ready to sprint when the time come well thank you for joining us this morning we'll see you later on this afternoon for the men's 20 kilometer mass start freestyle join us if you can then goodbye